All right. Hello, and welcome to the Foreign Correspondence Club. Uh, my name is Hans Greimel. I'm the Asia editor of Automotive News. I'll be your moderator today. And uh, before I introduce the guest, I'll present today's theme. Of course, uh, we're all here for the shocking news of Gon Shock. I think uh, it took all of us by surprise when we heard the news on November 19th that, uh, that uh, Carlos Ghosn, the chairman of Nissan, and of course the chairman of Mitsubishi and the chairman of Renault, the, the so-called alliance, uh, had been arrested. I think everybody in Japan was surprised except the <coughs> prosecutors and uh, the Asahi, <laughs> who scooped the nation with an impressive, very impressive scoop. Um, uh, of course, the, the, his arrest has wide-ranging uh, implications for Nissan, the alliance, um, everything from uh, corporate governments to the, uh, the future leadership of, of Nissan itself. Um, I'd like to introduce our guest today, uh, Takaki Na Nakanishi. He is the CEO of Nakanishi Research Institute. Um, I've had the pleasure of knowing him for a number of years, but really his history in Japan as an auto analyst, the top auto analyst in all of Japan, goes back almost as long as the Nissan-Renault alliance itself. And he's been watching the alliance since the early 90s when Carlos Ghosn first arrived in Japan. So we have no better uh, expert to talk to us about the uh, development of this alliance over the years. Um, Nakanishi-san, of course, is uh, renowned for being the top-rated auto analyst in Japan for uh, six straight years, uh, from 2003 until 2009. So it's my pleasure to introduce him today. I'm sure he's got lots of great insights to share with us. So please uh, save your, your uh, zinger questions for the Q&A session. Thank you. Okay, uh, Hans, uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, everybody, uh, nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Takaki Nakanishi. Uh, I've been spending almost 25 years as an uh, auto analyst, mostly security analyst. Uh, now I'm running this you know, company for independent, independently and uh, uh, standing in a kind of unique position, uh, uh, analyzing industrial companies. So, uh, so yeah, uh, first time when I met Carlos Ghosn. Uh, that was uh, 20 to 23 years ago. Uh, he was uh, CEO of Renault. Uh, I think he was uh, making a presentation about how to turn around Renault uh, at the, I think, Investors Conference attached to Paris Motor Show. And the second time I met him was uh, June 1999. Uh, that was a couple, of, maybe several months after announcement of uh, uh, Renault Nissan Alliance. And uh, uh, I met him uh, before he was uh, uh, really arriving to Nissan, I believe. And coincidentally, maybe this is open information now, uh, uh, I helped uh, Renault uh, to make uh, a deal with uh, Nissan uh, when I was at uh, uh, auto analyst at the Mail Range. And at that time, probably you know, uh, auto an you know, analyst's most important job was uh, beyond the wall, uh, helping, you know, making deal, uh, transaction, m and something like that. But anyway, uh, it is a great, my, my great honor uh, to make a presentation uh, in front of uh, uh, global media. And it uh, uh, seems like a, a lot of people, there are so many discussion issues. I, I think you know, uh, every, it's impossible to address everything. But as you know, I cannot really comment Carlos Ghosn is guilty or not guilty. Or uh, I really cannot comment this is a coup or not coup. Uh, that's not my job. Uh, my job is uh, address, uh, uh, you know, uh, making, making some e you know, good explanation of uh, a direct or indirect cause of uh, this problem. Uh, what's a real governance problem uh, lay, lay behind uh, between uh, Renault and Nissan, and uh, probably you know industry implication uh, because of this turmoil. Uh, that's kind of uh, you know key issues I like to address. And uh, before coming to the main topic, uh, many of them probably can read write Japanese. So I just published my book, uh, Case Revolution. And I think that this is a quite imperative knowledge to understand what I'm going to talk today. So I strongly encourage <laughs> to read this. This was published in November 21, so just a couple of days after uh, uh, Gon's arrest. 
And uh, luck, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, this is not a big discussion point in the industry today. <laughs> but uh, sooner or later, it should be focused. So uh, it's just a little joke. <laughs> but you know, when I first heard this, this you know, uh, news, I was really surprised. Mr. Saikawa said, you know, uh, this is, uh, you know, he felt, you know, more than regret, but outrage. Well, my case, sympathy. <laughs> You know, go need to spend Christmas. First time in Tokyo. Uh, it's pretty cold compared to Rio de Janeiro, I think. So it's a, the place supposed to some 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 joke. <laughs> but anyway, um, so uh, I think I like to address you know three uh, agenda today. Uh, number one, uh, uh, root cause, uh, direct or indirect, uh, uh, the cause behind uh, this problem. And also, uh, I think I'd like to uh, address um, uh, a lot impact to scenario analysis to uh, uh, development of the alliance. And a third point is, um, uh, what, what's the implication coming from re japanization of Nissan? I think uh, probably for now, it is impossible to stop. So uh, a potential implication to industry aspect. So those are uh, issues I'd like to address. Okay, uh, so let's move on to the first subject, uh, the background, the direct or indirect uh, cause. Um, I think I, I don't know the truth, what really happened. Most of the information I learned actually came from the prosecutor office or Nissan. And they have a clear intention. And, and a lot of uh, you know, media, particularly Japanese TV media, uh, has been uh, strongly influenced, uh, creating some kind of access. Runo and uh, uh, I think uh, you know, Gong and Nissan is evil. Uh, no, Gong and the uh, French state is evil. Runo, uh, and and uh, Nissan who is uh, protecting, uh, it's like, uh, like Mr. Saikal, fighting against, uh, fighting for uh, uh, the, the stakeholder of Nissan, is uh, uh, the, the justice. And I, I think you know, this is a, a, a very, I feel, uh, uh, uncomfortable about that you know, kind of a, you know, a good, bad, or evil, or, you know, or justice you know, kind of axis. Uh, I think you know, uh, this is, uh, seriously speaking, uh, Nissan's management issue has been involved, which Nissan has just to keep unchanged quite a long, long time. So um, uh, I feel Mr. Saikawa is a really part of uh, uh, a responsibility, and a very important part of the responsibility. And, and I think that kind of you know, thing has not been really addressed by Japanese media. So uh, uh, something I really want to stress that here for FCCJ member, uh, that's an important subject we should discuss. And also governance issue uh, between uh, Renault, Nissan. Uh, I think I've been, uh, been as a securities analyst uh, since 2005, when Gong uh, started to doing both the CEO position for Nissan and Renault. Uh, it's been a long, long time discussion how long Renault, Nissan will maintain uh, such a uh, uh, conflict of interest uh, structure of uh, uh, Renault, Nissan's you know, uh, capital structure. And uh, uh, it's, it's a classical thesis, you know, very much classical thesis. We've been discussing if either Renault, Nissan really want to be listed both stock exchange, this is a we call uh, 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 the parent, uh, children, you know, ch ch parent and a child subsidiary, uh, the dual listing, and uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, uh, basically doesn't make sense in terms of uh, uh, efficiency of uh, uh, capital. And, and uh, we are waiting for the answer. You know, so it is a quite a natural movement. Renault take a control over Nissan, or if they want to keep independent, I think uh, Renault need to reduce the stake and uh, make a more equal fit uh, st uh, capital structure. And uh, uh, this has not been uh, really answered in uh, quite a long time. And a uh, Nissan a management member has really keep that you know things gray and unexplained, unchanged. So I think a part of the you know, uh, responsibility, uh, Renault Nissan is a quite, quite, I think, uh, you know, quite big. So that's something I, I want to you know, address here. And, um, uh, and the Japanese media, simply talking about you know, amount of uh, uh, money, uh, compensation, uh, gone has been uh, misreported, uh, is bad. 
and um, uh, hiding, you know, or misrepresenting uh, documents is even even worse. Uh, but I just to start the point of my, you know, uh, 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 comment on this subject. I think amount is probably not important part of uh, problem. The 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 way to make a decision, the, 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 the uh, way to make a you know, determination, a process, transparency of uh, uh, process, and a you know, clear governance structure, oversee or check that process is uh, <coughs> the issue. And uh, uh, as you know, Nissan, Japanese you know, uh, uh, governance system is uh, still, it's been uh, getting better, but still kind of uh, you know, uh, 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 vague. Company doesn't really have to establish a, a special committee to oversee compensation, but the company really need to have a responsibility to, to you know, uh, transparency of uh, uh, process. So usually, uh, uh, independent outside the directors are appointed and oversee that process. But in Nissan's case, until June this year, the company has not has, uh, company has not had any outside independent directors, and, and uh, which has been uh, determined uh, by very vaguely. I think uh, under the, we didn't know the real discussion how GON's compensation has been dis dis determined. So um, uh, I think uh, in Japan, the, the, the media focus on uh, amount. You know, 10 billion is big or bad, small. I think it's not that, that big. But process was a serious issue and pressured by a capital market quite, quite a long time. But uh, I think a real root cause of uh, uh, Gon's uh, suspect or a charge is uh, probably really caused, you know, created by too long lasting, uh, uh, unclear uh, uh, governance structure of, of Nissan. And uh, that's a part of the Renault's responsibility to that, because Renault is uh, the largest uh, shareholder of uh, Nissan. So uh, I think that's, you know, this is uh, my understanding of uh, you know, uh, important discussion point of uh, uh, direct or indirect cause of this problem. And a lot of people ask, this is a coup or not? And who knows? Um, but it is important to know that uh, this was uh, started by internal uh, what do you say, uh, uh, whistleblowing? Uh, is that the right word to say? Whistleblowing, so um, uh, there must be some uh, intention. And um, I don't know how Mr. Saikawa management people handle this situation. Some pe it could be coup or it could be not, but uh, I think you know, uh, there must be some connection. So uh, uh, it is uh, impossible to prove what happened, but I think uh, you know, uh, the case was uh, related to some intention inside the Nissan. And uh, uh, clearly, Japan, Nissan's in the management has a passion to re-Japanize Nissan. You know, want to be more independent. And uh, they have uh, a lot of uh, confidence, can go along without Renault. And uh, they also have uh, more, more passion to deal with more promising, more powerful, more uh, successful new horizon of uh, alliance beyond uh, Renault. So um, uh, I think you know, a passion of Nissan's independence and re-Japanization is uh, obviously you know, uh, there. And, and uh, I felt from beginning of this year, particularly February, uh, I'm hearing a lot of uh, rumor uh, or uh, complaint uh, from Nissan people. Uh, uh, they are so uncomfortable about the decision uh, uh, Renault reappointed uh, Carlos Ghosn. And uh, uh, we knew the, there was a very nasty fight between uh, uh, French state and uh, Ghosn uh, since 2015. And 2017 was uh, really intensified regarding reappointment of his uh, CEO position at Renault. Um, and, and, and Carlos Ghosn was saying French state should sell 15% Renault stake first. After that, you know, uh, 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 irre irre irreversible uh, uh, structure can be achieved easily. So Ghosn was uh, uh, really making some fight, protecting Nissan, but suddenly Renault announced reappointing Carlos Ghosn as a CEO. And uh, Carlos Ghosn promised shareholders 
uh, to make a, a, a irreversible uh, structure, uh, no question, questionable uh, structure by 2022. And so from this you know, announcement of February to June, I think Nissan's inside Nissan, I felt a lot of confusion, complaint, fear, really wondering, fairness of Nissan's position in this discussion. Because I personally also felt it's gone, it's really fighting for what? Well, I felt there was a really no clear uh, discussion point. This is a good for Renault Nissan, a good for or Nissan. But absolutely, that's an opportunity for Carlos Ghosn. He can extend uh, his power, control, governance, maybe at least by 2022, beyond endless. So that kind of you know, atmosphere was uh, obvious inside the Nissan. And I think uh, this outcome was, uh, you know, to me, uh, it's understandable. But is that a real coup or not? I don't know. So that's my understanding you know, behind of this you know, uh, uh, problem. So next, I want to address a uh, uh, second subject, you know, the scenario analysis, what's going to happen to uh, Renault Nissan uh, from now on. And uh, uh, among some media, I've been pointing out there are three scenarios. Uh, number one, uh, Nissan will buy Renault share uh, based on uh, uh, RAMA, uh, Revised Alliance Memorandum Agreement, uh, which was uh, you know, revised in 2015 uh, after uh, the uh, uh, Prohange Pro, 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 Pro law uh, 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 in the state, uh, in, the, in, in French. Uh, uh, Renault, in the past, Nissan has uh, no right to buy Renault shares until Renault member of the Renault's board approved uh, that, that, that transaction. But after the revision, uh, Nissan now has a right uh, to buy Renault share based on a majority voting in Nissan's member of the board. Uh, so um, uh, that was a big win uh, for Nissan uh, after a big dispute in 2015. And Gong really helped uh, to make that, you know, things happen. And Gong thought, I believe, it's a, it's just, it, it, it is a probably not applicable. It's not, you know, it's impossible to use that because it's completely destroyed alliance, meaning share uh, uh, no control value. So uh, no voting rights mean uh, no, 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 no value for control, uh, which mean uh, I think a Gong probably believed he will be in power and uh, uh, that, you know, maybe bottom to buy Renault share was in front of his desk. But now that button is in front of Mr. Saikawa's desk. Uh, so uh, I think it is uh, possible uh, Nissan will push uh, that button to buy Renault share and uh, make the company, uh, make the voting rights of Renault over 43% over Nissan will be zero. Okay, so uh, I think that's a scenario one. But uh, we, I don't know the detail, conditions, and uh, what makes Nissan has a right to implement based on RMA. Nobody knows. But Renault, Management, of course, knows. Nissan, of course, knows. So they have a strategy. But I, for me, it is difficult to identify when and how. But Nissan probably want to make uh, uh, this decision, if possible, uh, uh, as early as possible. Because over the long term, negotiation power is uh, definitely stronger for Renault. As long as Renault maintaining 43% voting rights, at the share, general shareholders meeting, you know, Renault's power is uh, effectively more than 50 percent, because the percentage of uh, you know uh, using the voting right is uh, less than 90 percent. So, uh, which means uh, uh, if negotiation take a longer term, uh, Nissan's negotiation power will decrease. But in the short term, uh, Nissan has a strong power to negotiate against Renault, uh, taking opportunity of uh, the RMA uh, Nissan's right to buy Renault shares. So this is uh, one potential scenario, catastrophic scenario, but you know, chance is not that small. The second scenario, I think uh, Renault will try to be quiet and uh, consume time and uh, uh, use its 43% voting right and uh, shake up uh, Nissan's management and uh, try to control the board again, Nissan's board again. Uh, um, and uh, control, uh, try to get control 
and uh, 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 I think I you know, try to get merger or something like that in the future. It is possible, but uh, taking this case as, as a marriage, you know, Nissan does not want to get married, does not want get, to get, get married. Even Renault really have a power to control. It is impossible to really get married at this point of time. So chances, I think uh, this chance is low. And um, uh, it, is, it is a favorable scenario for Renault and a French state, but are probably difficult. Scenario number three, this is a very peaceful outcome. Renault Nissan discussed, and uh, Japan and a French state discuss, and uh, they try to find the most ideal outcome, good for French state, good for Japan, good for Renault and Nissan. That is, rebalance the cross-holding structure, probably less than 25% each, like uh, say 20%, 20% cross holding. So in the past, the structure is capital structure, Renault is a parent, Nissan is a subsidiary. But Gong created a unique alliance structure. The alliance side is equal fit. And that works so well at the first half of this alliance, but creation of a lot of confusions and, and uh, uh, confrontations and dissatisfaction in the latter half of the alliance. So we have a question. So maybe we just uh, make uh, alliance parent subsidiary, capital parent subsidiary. This is a scenario number two. But scenario number three is cap alliance is an equal fit. So why not? Capital structure is also alliance. Uh, it's also equal fit, like a 2020. So this is a, I hope you understand my explanation, but this is a scenario number three. It is possible because uh, uh, it is impossible to break up this alliance suddenly. Well, Nissan, Renault worked so hard to create this structure in the past 20 years. And uh, uh, it is impossible to really come to zero uh, over the night. So they uh, probably initially come to this equal fit agreement between uh, capital and alliance between Nissan and Renault, and take a time to think about what's the best solution they can take over the uh, longer the term. As for Renault's aspect, if Renault cannot control Nissan, there, there is no point to keep 43% uh, stake. 43% stake is, the passion of uh, control. This is a, they, they pay this value to control the company. If Nissan is now no way to control, I think Renault has uh, rationally uh, making a lot of sense. Reduce the stake, let's say 24.9% 20, or maybe like a 20%. Uh, so that's my uh, analysis uh, for a potential scenario. So uh, if time is allowed, I think I just address the implication to the industry. Well, so as this book say, you know, this is a, we are facing to case revolution, you know, transformation from manufacturing industry to uh, mobility industry. You know, we move not based on just the ownership, we move based on as a service. So this is a, you know, uh, the, 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 the significant transformation taking the industry facing to. And in order to become the uh, agri uh, agri you know, a comprehensive uh, service and uh, manufacturing provider uh, to this mobility industry, the scale of uh, uh, the company or alliance is critically important because level of uh, capital expenditures, uh, level of research and development are tremendous. And I believe at least four or five major OEMs group can just afford building such a big platform. So Renault, Nissan, Mitsubishi was, uh, well, well, still is, uh, the one uh, uh, potential uh, strong alliance. Uh, and um, uh, I think you know, uh, the, the very shaky situation in alliance of them uh, makes um, uh, uh, much you know, uh, advantageous uh, 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 comparatively. Uh, for uh, companies who are a coalition, like a GM, or like a Toyota Group, uh, like a Daimler. And, and I think uh, those three uh, front-running companies are very good, you know, uh, 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 the, the stage. I think uh, they, they, are, they are pretty much pleased. Uh, uh, the collapse, seeing the collapse and weakness of uh, uh, a powerful uh, Renault-Nissan Alliance Group. On the other hand, 
company like um, uh, uh, Volkswagen, like uh, Ford, uh, Peugeot, uh, they are kind of, uh, maybe Hyundai, uh, uh, Kia, they are mid-sized company group. Uh, uh, Volkswagen is not a mid-sized, but uh, uh, in terms of this, you know, a case, uh, uh, auto 2.0 type of the, uh, you know, uh, the, the preparation, I think uh, they are slightly behind. So they think this is a great opportunity to form a new the coalition, uh, if Nissan and Mitsubishi is open to make a discussion for uh, a future alliance. So uh, I think that this you know, uh, shaky or collapse of uh, Renault-Nissan alliance makes a tremendous impact, uh, competitive dynamics and a structure of uh, auto industry. And um, uh, uh, that makes uh, a lot of uh, power change, power shift uh, within industry, in my view. So uh, outcome? of their discussion is, uh, uh, it is quite interesting. Uh, uh, I, but I do want to see sudden collapse of the alliance. Uh, that's gonna make the company, either Renault, Nissan, very difficult. They should make a clear settle down. Whatever going for their direction, they should take a time to settle down, regain trust and uh, confidence, and uh, make a rational decision what's a good things for them and uh, that's good for their states and um, uh, uh, keeping power against uh, you know a uh, very competitive uh, uh, Toyota uh, GM or Daimler uh, uh, their presence in new uh, uh, mobility you know uh, inter industry transformation so um, uh, I don't know how long this problem will last uh, but uh, the, the, the really reshaping uh, their presence probably takes some time. So uh, this is a big, big threat to their future competitiveness. And uh, I really hope uh, uh, this you know, dispute uh, will come to uh, a, you know, a settling point and uh, make you know, open, trustful discussion of those uh, uh, parties involved. Okay, so that's my uh, uh, concluded my presentation, and I, I'm I'm sorry for my you know bad English, but uh, spiritually maybe we had already communicated. So uh, <laughs> that's what the uh, Runo Nisa needed. <laughs> so I, I want to conclude my presentation. Thank you. Well, thank you, Nakanishi-san. That was fascinating, and I think you covered so many angles and gave us so much uh, food for thought. So uh, at this point, I'll turn it over to the, the floor. We'll take questions from the working press first. If you have any, please raise your hand and introduce yourself. I think we have a, uh, a step to the mic microphone, if you can, or we have this uh, mic here. Yes. Go, go OK, please step. I guess we'll step up to the mic. I'm Martin Fritz with the German business magazine Wirtschaftswoche. Um, you said uh, Nissan and uh, Renault should be, uh, also the capital structure should be more equal. Uh, now the, the thing is the boss of Renault is also the boss of Nissan. Uh, you think the dual, dual CEO structure or dual chairman structure will be possible with Renault? Okay. Um I hope I understand your second question, but I'll try to answer first. Okay, um, first of all, I said, I didn't mention, I didn't mean equal fit or a dual uh, uh, equivalent, you know, uh, cross holding is a right choice. What I said was uh, a dual listing of uh, companies at a different stock exchange uh, create unclear governance structure, conflict of the interest. Okay, so uh, uh, one CEO serving, see, uh, one, one person serving CEO positions for those two companies is out of question. It is impossible. Well, I thought that was a temporary thing. But however, Gone has extended uh, how many years? Since 2005, so uh, uh, like uh, 12 years, he dominated that position. And uh, that's, uh, 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 I think, a market and shareholders really criticized that kind of things is uh, not uh, sustainable. So that's, that's one point. And uh, I said three scenario, right? Uh, uh, but from the market aspect, if Renault and uh, Nissan want to be listed uh, different companies at different markets, 
stock exchange, I think you know, they need to clarify the you know, control governance issue. As I said, Renault control Nissan, and a Nissan be, should be delisted, make a one company. So that's a you know, re really you know, rational uh, uh, logic of capitalism. Or if they really want to be separated uh, companies, they should be, the Renault should reduce the stake and uh, 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 try to solve a conflict of the interest sub subject. This is not uh, just a global case, like a uh, 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 soft bank group, you know, try to just uh, list their uh, soft bank you know, company. That, that is also a very uh, serious conflict of interest in the issue. I think um, the trend is uh, such a dual listing structure should be eliminated. That is a more like a governance called direction. Eh? Not just in Japan, basically elsewhere. But Japan was uh, very vague, and you know, they tried to organize this. So, answer is, I think uh, you know uh, the current sta status is very difficult to be maintained. They should find more clear and uh, simple structure. For instance, uh, they just uh, you know rebalance their share cross holdings by 2020. And an equal fee situation makes uh, those two companies listed uh, French and uh, Japanese stock market simultaneously. That's possible. And also, GON created a very ambivalent, ambivalent structure that is, I already mentioned, capital structure, Renault, Control, Nissan. So parent and a subsidiary. But alliance is different. Alliance is spiritually, spiritually equal fit. So that's you know uh, why Nissan own 15% no voting right, you know, uh, and Renault own 43% over Nissan with a voting right. So capital structure is a parent subsidiary, but you know it's a it's a more like an equal fit uh, spiritual uh, 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 you know alliance structure. And uh, and as, as I mentioned, it works so well at the beginning, but. In the second, in the second, latter half of this alliance, it creates a lot of problem. At the end, we have a, this big scandal on the collapse of uh, Carlos Ghosn. So uh, I think it is impossible to come back dual management structure. Uh, one, I think one one person controls both companies. I think Renault Nissan has only choices: go independent or go one company, or equal fit cross holding, you know, structure. So that's why I pointed out three uh, scenario is possible, but I don't know uh, uh, which one is the most likely. Um, I, I hope you get my drift. But anyway, uh, I think uh, my explanation answer two of your questions, I hope. Yeah. Okay. Very good. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. My name is Patrick Walte with German newspaper Frankfurter Allgemeine. I have two questions, if I may. If this alliance would break up, what would that mean for the Japanese auto industry? Could you speculate a little bit on that or give us your thoughts? And my second question, there was a lot of talk with analysts uh, uh, in Tokyo that the whole let's say, attack on Mr. Goon or the, the incidents that happened, that it has to do with the fact that he might be foreigner in a Japanese, that he might be foreigner in a Japanese company, mm -hmm. that he earned much more than Japanese CEOs. And there's this tendency to build up some kind of theory that that might be behind the scandal. Can you give us your thoughts on that? Would you agree or not? Oh, uh, okay. Second question. Well. The second question, if I understood it correctly, is about uh, can you th can you comment a little bit about uh, speculation that the attack against Gon is uh, partly because he's a foreigner at the comp at a oh. Japanese company and that he makes a lot more money than the typical <laughs> uh, Japanese CEO. Mm. And um, I think your first question was whether the if it works, what does it mean, or if it fails. What it means for the Japanese, Japanese automobile, automotive industry, You mean if, right? the, if the alliance continues to work out? No, break up. If it breaks up, mm. okay. Okay, um, I think, uh, you know, right word to use uh, regarding this incident is a re-Japanization of you know, a Nissan. I think a Nissan once gave up, okay, and I tried to be global company, okay, and they, Nissan has experienced a lot of uh, frustration and um, uh, this trigger or this transformation of Nissan today 
was really pulled by all the generation of Nissan. Like, uh, you know, uh, in 1999, uh, the age between uh, 25 to 35 to 40, and uh, still remain as a Nissan, but uh, they are uh, originally from Nissan. But uh, there are so many employees, you know, join Nissan after that 1999, uh, and uh, uh, there are uh, a lot of diversity in that company, okay? But uh, at the middle to top level of uh, traditional Nissan people are so unhappy about uh, their uh, uh, treatment, and also uh, they are afraid that Nissan will be unfairly uh, uh, used for step of success of French state you know, industry, st industrial strategy, or maybe just uh, you know, a, a passion of Carlos Ghosn. Okay, so um, uh, they are fighting for independency, and also they are fighting for uh, uh, fair treatment of the company really afraid of the future of Nissan, okay? So um, uh, uh, this I call re-Japanization, okay? Um, and uh, it could be, you know, so if the question is a hypothetical question, if it's break up. I think Nissan's management has a lot of challenge. Uh, re-Japanization is a, a good nationalistic you know, uh, uh, passion, but automotive industry is uh, so difficult and really facing to a uh, uh, significant change of the transformation. So quality of the management, power of the management is uh, uh, really important. Yes, I understand Nissan's engineer makes a great car. But my still question, have a question. Nissan's management has a good power to manage the company, manage the business. I think in that regard, Nissan's success today is not just a came from engineering. It came from the fantastic management capability of Renault. So Nissan's success is based on alliance. Okay, so uh, uh, Nissan, if become independent, re-Japanized, I think uh, you know, uh, they are really rough and a tough road uh, to really survive the company in this difficult uh, uh, market competition. You know, um, so um, uh, I'm not that opportunistic or, or uh, opportunistic uh, about uh, Nissan's future. If Nissan takes uh, option one, number one, uh, you know, uh, push button and uh, take uh, make uh, Renault's voting right to zero, and uh, uh, it's uh, more like a like a Pearl Harbor attack, right? So uh, uh, I don't know the outcome. Um, and, um, uh, so implication to Japanese management, but I think you know, uh, if I am a foreigner and I have a good position to make a big money at some, some corporation, I'm very afraid uh, because uh, you know, uh, probably Nissan Japan is a more dangerous country than North Korea uh, today <laughs> from well, very highly paid executives. Uh, but uh, in turn, Nissan, uh, not necessarily Nissan, Japanese corporation and industry need strong capable people, executives, uh, really run the company, run the business, and uh, make this, you know, Japan is essentially good engineer, engineers, but the management capability is not that good. So uh, uh, we need many, many talents to uh, really run this business and uh, a company well. And uh, I really afraid uh, makes this incident uh, really discourage uh, uh, excellent talents globally have a passion to come to Japan, be part of a Japanese corporation, and uh, uh, make uh, you know, Japan successful. So uh, a re-Japanization of Nissan may risk uh, success of the future, the success of the future of Japan. That's my concern. Is that answer to your question? Good. Very good. Anybody else? Okay, uh, we'll go w way off in the corner there. They had their hand up first, I'm sorry. Also working present. Thank you, my name is Stefano Carrera for the Italian Economic Daily, Solo 24 Ore. So who will decide the future of the alliance and the company? Don't you think that uh, it won't be Mr. Bolloré or Mr. Saikawa because uh, the governments are deeply involved in this, uh, in this issue. And uh, how do you see specifically the role of Japanese government in this? Thank you. 
Okay, uh, to make a decision uh, uh, for future of this alliance, uh, management structure uh, of uh, all three companies are not really finalized yet. Uh, so they need more, a little more time uh, to clarify their next management structure. For instance, C CEO Renault, uh, uh, we don't know who will be. Uh, at this point, uh, Borore is uh, acting CEO, uh, but the, his power to manage the company, you know, quality of leadership is still questioned. So uh, uh, it's possible to have, uh, uh, you know, a different person. So my, my point is, who knows? You know, we, we don't know who will be the next CEO yet. Okay, and also uh, Nissan, I think, you know, my speculation, my speculation is uh, Mr. Saikawa, uh, will be very powerful leader, Nissan, controlling the board, and also controlling a majority of employees, you know, I think, uh, you know, uh, support. Um, and also uh, his relationship with the Japanese government, a Japanese government standing the third party, but, uh, you know, uh, they are really carefully monitoring, you know, Nissan's situation. So uh, uh, Saikawa will be the, probably the key person to make a decision. And from Mitsubishi Motors, uh, uh, I think um, you know, no, no doubt, you know, Mr. Uh, Masuko will stay in CEO, and uh, probably, probably this is important. A stronger support uh, should be coming from Mitsubishi Group, uh, particularly Mitsubishi Corp. Uh, will try to be more important roles in managing uh, Mitsubishi Motors. So those three, you know, a new structure will discuss for the future direction of uh, uh, Alliance future, okay? So that's, I think, you know, uh, the, 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 I think uh, your question who, my answer is them, okay? And, um, uh, but however, however, as already mentioned, from Nissan's aspect, they really wanna come up to conclusion as early as possible. Because in a power of capitalism, Renault has a power to control Nissan, uh, uh, general shareholder meetings. So appointing or, or uh, uh, dismissing you know, directors, this is all up to uh, Renault. So Nissan want to really make a decision in the short term. And uh, from our aspect of Renault, uh, they really want to take more time as much as possible uh, because you know, when time goes by, uh, Renault eventually can control Nissan again. However, outcome is a disaster if Nissan really does not want to do uh, marriage with uh, uh, Renault. We can't get you know, marriage if one party really wants to divorce. <laughs> so, um, uh, but you know, uh, Renault's tactics, they want to take more time, shake up Nissan's management over the time. So uh, we, we know who will be the uh, key person will negotiate. But uh, we don't know how they're going to negotiate and uh, how the outcome will be reached. So that's a tough question to answer. Is that okay to your questions? Okay, we'll go uh, right here at the, this uh, middle table, please. Thank you. Hello, my name is Crowell, and I'm a freelance writer. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I'm asking, could you expand a little bit more on the culture clash between uh, how the uh, Japanese uh, uh, consider performance and and, comp and executive compensation. And do you think that m Mr. Gohn actually made an impact on, in this area or only within his own company? You, so your point of question is a Japanese culture uh, to Compensation culture. Compensation culture to determine uh, Japanese executives. Yeah. And in this case, how Gohn will control their compensations? Well, well, sorry, uh, I didn't understand your point of view. I just wondered, Mr. Gohn is, is outspoken on the need for performance over more traditional management styles. Mm -hmm. Do you think he made an impact outside of his own company, in Japan, outside of his own company on this area? Hmm, I, I think I probably don't know well. Uh, answer properly your point of the interest. So this is a probably incomplete answer. Uh, nevertheless, um, for Nissan, uh, Gon was you know from if you look at the Nissan's you know uh, compensation structure, 
they have a relatively reasonable Japanese cultured level of compensation. Plus, which never be disclosed by the SAR, uh, stock appreciation rewards, are also uh, uh, available, provided to uh, 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 not just a member of the board, the directors, but also executives, directors. Uh, so we don't know exactly the level of compensation paid to those executives. Uh, so, um, and that you know, distribution of uh, uh, SAR are mostly dominated by Carlos Ghosn. So uh, uh, I don't know uh, fairness uh, or a level of the compensation's reason, reason uh, I think, uh, you know, appropriateness. It's hard to say because I don't know the, I don't know the actual information. Okay, there is no disclosure. I think uh, we should uh, focus two, two questions over Nissan. Number one, structure of SAR, which should be disclosed. And uh, who get, who compensated, how much, and, um, uh, um, um, and also you know, accounting practice, accounting procedures uh, for this SAR is also we should demand strongly against Nissan. Nissan say, oh, this is a matter of you know, uh, inspect, uh, prosecutors you know, investigation. I can't answer anything, but we, have, we, should, we, we need to know that, that things. That is a really important uh, arguing point. So probably not <laughs> point to be a question, but I feel uh, that SAR is a very important part of uh, uh, Nissan's problem and uh, 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 not, not appropriate level of disclosure, what really happened. And uh, uh, the, so may I, stop the, may I stop here? I probably not really answered his question, but um, I don't know the implication to outside uh, Japan okay. operations. All right, that's, yeah? that's fine. Very good. We had one more question right next to here, door, and then we'll, we'll work our way this way. Sorry they had their hands up. Uh, we'll get to you guys. <laughs> Uh, Stefan Wagstel, I'm with the Nikkei Asian Review. Um, would you say a bit more about the uh, possible interests of the Japanese state? Um, would it support re-Japanization, or would it think that that would make a less competitive Nissan? Obviously, it's going to be interested in things like jobs and factories in Japan, but when it comes to the crunch on this question, which way do you think it will go? Okay, uh, thank you for that question. That's a very sensitive uh, question to answer, if I answer inappropriately. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, uh, Japan, Japanese, you know, French state is a, sh you know, have a position as a shareholder of Renault. And that's, that, that, that is clear. But Japan government, you know, Nissan is just a one independent corporations. And uh, uh, there is no direct linkage uh, to this problem. So uh, uh, Japanese government is outside of uh, uh, this problem. Uh, and they just uh, want to see uh, a peaceful uh, agreement and outcome uh, beyond this conflict. That's maybe safe answer. <laughs> uh, nevertheless, <laughs> um, uh, I think you know, there are many opinions inside the government and also uh, ministry. Um, so um, um, there are many opinions. And uh, uh, definitely some people in the inside the government, uh, some people in ministry sh may be thinking, you know, uh, this is a favorable outcome. Uh, they are standing, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the sideline, of course, no intervene, in the intervention. But, uh, uh, they support Nissan's re-Japanization uh, because that's good for Japan wealth and you know, success of uh, you know, Japanese state interest um, because you know, uh, uh, the new generation of automotive competitiveness is not just uh, between co corporations. This is a really national uh, uh, strategy to win uh, we call this is a case, uh, you say Auto 2.0 or uh, whatsoever, uh, the new you know, power of this automotive industry, mobility industry, is really determine the uh, success of uh, the nation in states of the future. Like uh, US, 
they are uh, working very closely between uh, uh, IT corporations and automotive industry. China, everything is closed, but uh, they are really uh, dominating uh, in a lot of uh, key technologies and also uh, dominating the data point, the database. And uh, JAMA has also have a strategy. So uh, um, if Nissan, Mitsubishi also, uh, are really you know, uh, 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 unified into uh, a French uh, uh, industrial strategy, uh, that is a big threat against Japan. Okay, Rune, I think this is the most, I think, I think I, the automotive industry is now the fighting or a strategic confrontation among nations, not just uh, farms. So more and more, it is difficult cross-border alliance. Uh, we learned this, you know, at the time of the financial crisis, 2008. You know, a lot of companies injected, uh, you know, tax into automotive industry, and uh, helped uh, 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 return around of automotive industries. But uh, in case you know that company was uh, across the border, you know, like uh, Nissan, you know, tax injection Nissan cannot be used by French. You know, uh, uh, Renault's turnaround. It has to be some something. Money, ne money need to be painted the color. So, it's a it's a separate issue, right? So, cross border, you know, trans, you know, uh, alliance is uh, getting more difficult. It is, you know, I I I don't mean it's impossible, but control is getting more difficult. So, uh, uh, Japanese sentiment. I'm not talking about whole consensus. Some people at the states and also uh, uh, ministry thinks Nissan should be on Japan's side. And that's why Nissan's passion to re-Japanize, uh, some people are supportive in my, in my observation. Yep, so. Uh, Can I just follow that up? So, so those people are arguing that, but that contradicts your earlier point, which is that you said you had to have very large critical mass mm -hmm. in the modern global car industry. Exactly. So there's a, is there here in Japan, in the, these government circles, some sort of conflict between mm -hmm. those people who would Japanize and those people who say only global companies are big enough? Um, OK, thank you for that question. It may sound con uh, contradicting, uh, but uh, Without a control, uh, alliance structure can be made. I think a uh, discussion point of Nissan is uh, uh, probably, f I think a more important uh, point is uh, fairness. Okay, because gone power was absolute, so powerful, uh, no, no. Okay, so um, uh, I think you know, gone was a great manager in the past and are treating Nissan so fairly, but uh, in the past several years, I think fairness has disappeared. And uh, I think uh, maybe Nissan people are so afraid future of the company, fairness of the company. So um, uh, without the trust and also mutually beneficial, it is very difficult to create a meaningful alliance. So breakup may be better outcome in some case. Okay? So uh, I'm not denying uh, over the border, cross-border alliance. That is essentially important, critical, but trust and a mutual benefit, fairness is very important. And uh, my question here is, does, do they really exist in Renault Nissan's alliance structure under Gon's passion for power or, or you know, governance? It's questionable. So um, uh, um, I think uh, you know, that's why re-Japanization of Nissan's passion, some people support it. Some people are supportive. I don't say Japanese. Please don't write. Japanese government are supportive. You know, that's a wrong, so-called fake fake news. <laughs> so please don't do that. Some people. Well, we don't like fake news here either. Uh, we'll go to the middle table. Uh, did someone here have a question? Yes. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm Yuri Kageyama with Associated Press. I, I just, uh, as an, um, I'm not a, uh, like, I don't sit on boards or anything, so a lot of us are puzzled by what's going on. How, um, Mr. Saikawa told us that Mr. Gohn had tremendous power, and your presentation also spoke about that. Why, why was that allowed? 
And it seems kind of like extreme to go and throw that guy in jail just because you want to start talking about these scenarios. How come they couldn't talk about such scenarios earlier in, you know, in, a, comf you know, in a peaceful, comfortable, adult way? Uh, why did they allow this guy to have all this power that was, you know, was becoming problematic? I, I, it's just very puzzling. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe it is probably need to understand uh, historical background uh, between uh, Runo and Nissan. Uh, I think by 2003, uh, it was an obvious path. Uh, Renault will control Nissan completely after successful turnaround of uh, Nissan. That's why Renault own a uh, uh, stock warrant in acquired the 1999. Initial stake was of 36% with warrant, exercisable as some condition. And 2003, Renault, exec Renault executed, executed that warrant and an increased stake to 43%, to 44% at that time. So 44% uh, is a virtually controlling company. And uh, over the time, there should be 51 and a completely subsidiary at 100% in the future. That was the original path. Uh, however, Gon managed quite uniquely in order to make this alliance successful, that is, Capital structure, parent subsidiary, yes. But alliance is different. Alliance you know, uh, is equal fit. That is a spirit, spiritually equal fit. Nissan and uh, Renault, it's an uh, equal fit, equal. Okay? So they respect each other, creating business and a job, you know, alliance jobs based on an uh, equal fit spirit. So that, that was uh, you know, Gon's great success with this alliance. And then they make a cross-holding structure, 43 versus 15, okay? Then, in 2005, uh, uh, Gon become CEO and chairman, both Renault and uh, Nissan, okay? So uh, even Nissan, Nissan side, Gon is already very powerful uh, management, uh, the, 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 I, should, I, I, can, I can say maybe emperor of uh, Nissan, okay? But uh, Renault owns, 43% over Nissan. And uh, if Gon become a CEO, chairman of uh, Renault, it, it is a, you know, the parent company's you know, CEO is also gone. So all, and also in there was a Renault Nissan VV. VV you know, Renault Nissan VV is a, is a subsidiary made in the uh, uh, Netherlands. Uh, uh, that chairman of Alliance is also a strong power to controlling Alliance management. All of those three chairman and a CEO position are dominated by Carlos Ghosn. So his power is, it is a, it's a, so, so powerful. It is emperor. Okay, so, um, and also uh, many, many executives are, are really appointed by, uh, and a strong influence by Carlos Ghosn. So uh, I think a Japanese, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, people who handle this case, and I think, I think there are three key persons, like uh, Mr. Saikawa, uh, Mr. Kawaguchi, and uh, Mr. Karube. You know, those three, you know, uh, Nissan's, you know, uh, uh, original uh, uh, um, working people, uh, uh, management people, but they felt they are so afraid of, uh, in my view, they're so afraid of uh, Gon will fight back if they try to open this information with him. So uh, uh, I, I think it, 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 may, it may be puzzling, but uh, I think that is uh, uh, only uh, potential, only way they thought they really can uh, 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 make this as uh, you know prosecuted uh, 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 by doing this kind of a you know it sounds like a big coup and also very uh, uh, surprising way without any discussion. The salary prosecutor come in, right? So. Uh, um, I think that, that that's quite, quite a, you know, a, a wide uh, way. But I thought those three people thought uh, this is the only way they can execute this, you know, uh, pro fixing this problem. And as for Japan systematic, you know, uh, situation, uh, uh, legal, uh, uh, what do you say, shihotorikiki in English? Shihotorikiki. Huh? Ah. Uh, bargaining, uh, legal bargaining. 
a, a plea bargain. Huh? Uh, it's called plea bargaining. Oh, plea bargaining, yes. So plea bargaining was introduced in Japan uh, in 2000, I think in June uh, 2018. And uh, for prosecutor's office also have a big ambition make this uh, plea uh, bargaining as a very powerful way to fix, you know, really fixing Japanese you know, corporate crimes. And uh, uh, they also had the passion to make this as a very successful case uh, to make this plea bargaining become uh, uh, very uh, settled and uh, become a common uh, practice in the Japanese uh, 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 legal system. Okay. So um, um, that, that I think those two companies, two, two parties, you know, uh, Nissan and also uh, the prosecutor's office has a uh, ambitions, you know, uh, is ambition right what? But their goals. Uh, uh, that's why, you know, it become like uh, those two parties working together. But I think that that's a different aims and a different goals. Uh, that, that's my understanding. But I feel, I feel very sorry about Carlos Ghosn, you know. Uh, I think a Japanese legal system sounds very brutal. <laughs> and uh, uh, I, I think uh, I want to send my blanket to, to him <laughs> because uh, uh, there is very cold uh, in the winter time. Uh, I think, uh, you know, probably there is no chance Carlos Ghosn going out uh, from the uh, Kosuge for a while uh, because of the risk of uh, uh, he will escape. And also based on Japanese you know, prosecu prosecution system, you know, it probably it is impossible to uh, uh, come out during investigation. So uh, I feel very sorry. I think that system is probably looks, looks so unfair, <laughs> brutal to westernize the system. But still, unfortunately, that is a Japanese uh, legal system. We, s we may need to think, of, think about to, to change or uh, uh, review the legal system. But uh, unfortunately, at this point, there is no special uh, treatment. So um, I hope you understand my. my that you will not say whether it's a coup or not a coup, but everything you said no. seems to be no. indicating. I, 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 I don't, don't want to say coup. coup. Okay. okay. There was, uh, uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, the, the point is, uh, you know, uh, 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 whisper uh, blowing was a uh, beginning. Right from a standpoint of uh, management, mm. but they're, but they 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 are fighting this case to protect the company. Okay, okay. protect the company, because who knows uh, who the whistleblower is? I mean, maybe this is just an excuse. Well, who knows? Yeah. That's your guess, right? So we don't know that. Okay, whisper blowing was the beginning of this case. If so, I think Saikawa has a lot of option to handle this whisper blowing, but. Uh, his judgment was uh, this, you know, process. You think you think it's a puzzling and unfair, but that was his decision. And a lot of people think, oh, this might be the coup. It's possible, but how can I prove that? I don't know. But uh, he definitely, if you look at the Japanese media, he he been he's been treated like a you know hero, protecting stakeholder of Nissan against absolute evil of. Uh, <laughs> crazily compensated, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the powerful, powerful guy. And it uh, seems like Runo and a uh, French state back of him. So uh, I think this Japanese media has, a, you know, uh, the reporting way is uh, not appropriate. Uh, definitely, I think that's not fair. But at this point, I think Saikawa and uh, Nissan has a, really have a rational explanation. There was a whisper blowing. Then they have to really protect the company. Okay? This is a really critical crime, potentially destroy the company. So uh, they have a, you know, a rational explanation how they handle this. So I'm not really saying this is not coup, but uh, there is no obvious proof. You know? But uh, as I really say at the beginning, because whisper blowing was the beginning. So uh, it is possible to link this case as uh, some kind of a, uh, 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 what do you say? What well, we say, coup, coup is maybe the right word. There, might, there could be some linkage, but I think that's not the only word to explain this you know, problem. Okay. Very good. I think we're running out of time. Uh, do we have one, maybe one last question? Anyone? Anyone? Uh, 
<laughs> okay, we're going to go... Uh, well, you've had your hand up, but you also work for my organization, so <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defer <laughs> over to the to the edge here. I'm a little confused by your use of the word fair in all of this. If we use the word fair not to be what do I like, but what is legal, assuming if and only if that there is a, a rule of law in Japan, mm -hmm. then Renault owns 43% of the company, and whether you like it or not, and whether you think it's um, not nice that uh, that you produce more than uh, than Renault, then it still owns. I never say like that. Uh, so I, I'm confused why, of your scenarios, you didn't look at the possibility that Renault just buys out the rest of it and, and steamrolls the whole thing. Uh, the, the, have you ever read the RAM, RAM, RAMA? Absolutely it's, pro, not. it's prohibited. We know to buy Nissan shares. Then it sits on on forty three percent and uh, and well, ends the thing. Well, based on Nissan's board agreement, if Nissan's board say yes, yeah, we know have we know can buy Nissan shares. Revised agree, alliance memorandum agreement. This is a contract between Renault and Nissan. Okay, and that prohibit Renault to buy shares, Nissan shares, without Nissan's board approval. Legally, what's the, no, no, what's the relationship between what's going on with Carlos Ghosn uh -huh. and the uh, relationship between uh, Renault and uh, Nissan? It seems to be, however much people might dislike it, seems to be unrelated. Either Renault owns it or it doesn't. Whether so, whether uh, Carlos Ghosn is there or not, it still owns it. Oh yeah, I think uh, you know. Uh, the point is that RAMA was uh, made after a dispute over a uh, French state uh, 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 intervene into Renault uh, management, taking uh, full range uh, uh, law. Okay, so the agreement was uh, made in order to settle down. Uh, 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 distrust or you know dissatisfaction, worriness uh, between uh, Nissan and Renault. That was uh, made in 2015, December, December 2015. Okay, so uh, uh, that means you know, uh, well, uh, uh, from the beginning, as a part of the you know M and activities, I thought Nissan was already sold to Renault, and uh, over the time they happily get merged or uh, unified as a you know, a logic of the capitalism. Okay? That, that, that's a basic scenario. But go on change that way. Those two parties are you know, uh, uh, equal fit in spiritual things. But capitalism is, is, is a parent and a subsidiary, right? And he believed he will be in power for foreseeable future. He can handle, because he control member of the board of uh, Nissan. Right, but today, because uh, French side uh, account for only two seat, Japan side account for five seat, so <laughs> Nissan's board is uh, at this point controlled by Japan side. So as long as this board refuse, Renault, even Renault ask to buy, I think uh, you know uh, Renault cannot uh, uh, increase the stake over Nissan without Nissan's board approval. But that is a contract, as long as I know. To return to the question, though, what is legally, what's the link between um, Gorn being there or not being there and, and um, dissolving the, um, the relationship? So, so, sorry, uh, I'm, I'm still don't understand your question. <coughs> can, can you paraphrase? Well, you're asking since if Gorn is out of the picture. Yeah, if he fell uh, under a, a bus or whatever, seems to be irrelevant to, um, uh, to the shareholding relationship. I think, yeah. Uh, yes. I think you have to understand that the share relationship is one thing, but there's this contract, this alliance contract, which is a legal contract. Yes, sorry, through him? Well, no, 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 no. Through Gorn? Between, between Bruno and Nissan. So, the, so how does it uh, relate to Gorn? Oh, well, Gorn was a CEO of uh, Nis Bruno, and uh, he, was a, he was a CEO of Nissan. At that time, that contract was uh, made. But legally, how does that uh, crystallize the change in the relationship between the two of them? Uh, what do you mean, the legal? Well, I think you're saying, how does that, uh, 
I think maybe we could take this off uh, offline after after the discussion because uh, I, but maybe if you'd like to follow up a little bit later, but. Well, uh, but there, there is a, you know, to, to, to conclude this, you know, uh, debate, the, uh, debate, I think, you know, uh, I think, you know, the, the point is uh, uh, this ambivalent structure, power balance between Runo Nissan was really based on Carlos Ghosn's absolute power and his regime continued to exist. Okay? And uh, without him now, Runo and Nissan really need to discuss what is a good outcome or good relationships, good capital structure from the zero base. Okay? So uh, I think they will discuss what is the best outcome. And uh, I can easily assume Nissan will ask more equally fit relationships, not just the spirit of the alliance, but also capital relationships. And uh, Renault thinks what, uh, what, what, how, what, what, what the legally approved, what, the, what is the action they can make, you know? I, I think uh, there is no, mi no many options for Renault. Uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, with, without the mutual agreement, mutual trust, alliance never work well, okay? So um, uh, Renault really need to decide what is the best outcome. Uh, for the interest of the Renault and the French state industrial manage industrial control. So uh, I think a discussion will be start tonight. They say, you know, this is just a, you know, a reaffirmation of uh, uh, alliance. But I think a more serious discussion will probably take place uh, uh, among the three companies in a CEO meeting tonight, I think. Do you have the time of the meeting? Uh, 28, right? Today. Yeah, yeah, but the time? I don't know. I'm just an analyst. I am just an analyst. So <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not a legal. <laughs> you know, I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> I'm not a prosecutor. <laughs> so I did. I did my best. You know, answer your you know uh, questions and also try to understand more this situation correctly. It is very quite quite confusing, but appreciate you know uh, having me this opportunity. Uh, have a dialogue with. Uh, 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 global and correspondent people. So thank you. Yes, uh, and thank you, Nakanishi-san. It was a pleasure listening to your, your scenarios and your insights. Uh, really, thank you for sharing us. I think we could stay here a long time talking, but uh, it's time to uh, wrap up. I'd like to thank you with a, uh, we always do this for our guest speakers. It's an honorary uh, membership to the club, and I'd like to present this to you as our thanks. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. So I can have my favorite smoked salmon salad. Here, <laughs> this restaurant here. I like that too. <laughs>